cloud risk. So what is happening on the cloud risk? So when we start to understand that there is less of a physical control over here. First thing in the cloud risk. So when you know when we are talking about the cloud risk in general, so certain risk they can come because it is less physical control over the environment that what we are consuming. And as we, we know, if you compare this with your data centers, so we have the less physical control and some of the risk could be generated from that particular part as well. Now, this goes along with there being the less visibility as connected to the virtualization and the abstraction of services that is happening. So due to that as well, some of the risk could be lies over there because and to be honest, in either it is IS, PaaS or SaaS, virtualization is not my responsibility. So I cannot just simply go ahead and check whether there is happening something. You no, know, uh, okay, one attack or kind of a thing that you have heard about, something like the VM hopping. Or data dispersion. Right. So you know i cannot control these kind of thing so if you haven't properly you know implemented the multi tenancy shared resources these kind of a things can happen and because i have the less visibility there is the virtualization layer there is the abstraction which is hiding these things from me so i cannot just go ahead and analyze these things over there so what we need is we need actually you know there is a need of being a more proactive management more hands-on management because of the you know these previous two things so constantly we have to keep doing the management and you know make sure that there is no risk that is like over there and finally there need to be a concise risk management process so how you are going to the more concisely how you are going to respond to a risk are certain things are acceptable and you do nothing about them you know when you notice them in the risk register means risk acceptance kinds of things are you going to accept those things right are anything that you know how you'll be responding to the risk are there certain things that you would avoid because they are too risky for continuing the business operation and are there certain things that we need to be mitigated by the means of control this is actually where we would spend most of our time in the mitigation and there are certain things that should be transferred as the insurance so these kind of a things the decision that we need to take about in the cloud risk over here okay so as we were talking about that there are two perspectives that one should have when consuming the services from the cloud service provider the perspective of the consumer their own but also the perspective of the provider whom they are consuming the services from so when we look into the service models okay they, you know, we have the different different kind of the service models itself so first one is going to be the you know here you know i'm just directly jumping here the service and deployment model so i was being a bit lazy over here so i just put few points like the shared responsibility model and you know just talk about the private cloud public cloud i haven't put the IES SaaS in here anywhere. So, but we are going to discuss about them as well. Okay. So first, we will be looking from the point perspective of the services. So there, you know, we can add things like the IES pass and SaaS over here. All these things we can place in over here at once. So when we will be talking about the your cloud risk, so when talking about the services, so when we are talking about the I, you know, for the this service deployment, you can just assume that what we have shared responsibility kind of a model that what we were having. So you can assume those kind of a things. Like if I just want to divide this part, what I can have is on the base I can have the networking, then you know just remember that shared responsibility model for yourself when there was the storage there is going to be the server you know i'm just simply you know then virtualization 
then OS on top of it, and then there is going to be the your application, right? So this is a, just a kind of an overview. So first, if we talk about the infrastructure as a service, with this model, the responsibility of security and the majority component of risk fall on to where on your consumer and they are responsible for the launching of virtual machine guest operating system configuring and patching the risk of the associated with the is are you know tremendous and it is same governance and risk management issue that are present inside our data center so it is same as you know they are in our data center over here okay and when we are talking about these things you know they are same as well but if we talk about the controlling of these things okay so i have placed few things more so let me just design this something like this network storage and each of the layers that is the part of our solution over here now as we are talking that in here you are going to work with the you know uh, the responsibility where it lies okay now how I am controlling my IES through my management portal, right? And that management portal is your uh, kind of your management layer, right? Now, when we are talking about these things, that you know, there should be the uh, your different different scenarios, uh, you know, the, how the things should be, you know, uh, network security, how it will be deployed, and all those kind of things. When we are talking about these things now when we are talking about the iaas part over here so hmm, when we are talking about the example is let's say that i was thinking about an example that con okay for controlling who can make the network configuration change if we think about the infrastructure as a service and let's just talk about this network com component if you would have to control this on your on premise you would be having the different devices maybe cisco routers you are having you are having some bridges okay over there you may know, some you know, other firewall devices and all those kind of a things that was over there now controlling or making the network configuration change it shift from the you know uh, account on the individual device to the from devices it move to the where your cloud management portal not this is a physical one network i'm talking about but if in the cloud i'm talking about in ies this os and the app is going to be my responsibility rest is the cloud service provider but now in here as well what we have done we have deployed the network so if i have to control that who can access my network what i am going to do i am going to apply some network rule NSG rules firewalls and those things we are really controlling from the your platform directly okay so in infrastructure service if i have to say that good news is that most of the existing governance and risk management activity that any organization they have already built they are directly transferable almost all they are directly transferable onto the infrastructure as a service so you know like example that i was giving controlling the who can make the network changes shift to the account you know, those kind of a thing so you know uh although if i'm talking about the underlying infrastructure like hvac network power that is just in the traditional data center i don't have to worry about that that would be the cloud service provider but you know the same governance and risk management issue they are going to be present of the exposure of the system to the different different you know changes or to the network that is there so those processes are still going to be very much similar onto the infrastructure as a service then there is going to be the your pass service so with pass organization selection is determined by their need of ability to self manage governance and risk issue that is there are less than the infrastructure as a service but customer they are still in the position to exercise a significant effort in determining whether contract 
you know contract stipulation are effective providing the level of control and support required to underline the system that they are not in contact with you know you cannot go ahead and control the things like your operating system here you are only you know managing the application over here so you have you are just stick you know stuck with those kind of a thing so the likelihood of you know getting the full negotiated contract you know is very low here right? you are not going to get that this is my requirement and i want to change these things according to my need so because these things will be uh, you know provided a standard contract that what i was talking about so pass how it generally deal with it deal with the api calls okay so delivery of the rich api and how the collection of the some data are necessary to prove the sla is being you know adhere to this one and you know some customer is still in the position of having the exercise a significant effort whether they can change something in the contract or something like that but what we should be more focused on on the api and its security because it will be taking the data out and communicating all the things so how we can what are the risks related to the apis and all that would be something that what we will be focusing on over here so this is less than the you know your hours but still some of the factor you have to also manage so when we are talking about the saas it is going to give the most of the critical example over here right that here we have the need of the negotiated contract and you know a contract which will protect the ability to govern or validate the risk if it is related to the data stored process and transmitted within the end of the application over here okay so when organization need at the saas level are very refined so at this level we are consuming a service that is majority of case presented the most critical okay so what we need we need to the most you know critical part is that we need to negotiate a contract and this is specifically concerning and controlling to the management of the data the client is solely going to be responsible for but their data so if i am using my data i am responsible for that over here no matter what kind of the services model you are consuming even combination of the different different service model okay i am just responsible for my data this is one thing that is that should be very clear okay but how the information or a data is reported to them what are the security control that are to you know that are that of the cloud service provider is going to provide us are imperative to the understanding so i am responsible for the data security but what they are providing to me is going to be the something another you know, another thing that you will be focused on as well right so these are the three things that is in the your cloud is pass and saas now if you will look from the standpoint of the deployment model so what we have private cloud public cloud hybrid cloud so when we are talking about the private deployment model so i think okay i think all that risk erm it is going to be the same as the you know what we have in the your so even yeah there would be one thing that could be changed in the private cloud that would be if you have the third party you have allowed the third party to own or manage the private cloud which is very common okay this is similar to how governance affect the outsource provider so there will be the shared responsibility and obligation that are going to be defined by a contract okay what's good to note though is that in private cloud you have a better chance of implementing the type of governance that you would have implemented on your own data center although it is not going to be the precisely the same so it is become extremely important to require the vendor to update to the latest version of the private cloud root platform within certain time period and release after you sign off so within the self hosted private cloud governance will focus on internal service level agreement and the cloud user over there these will be few things in the deployment if we are talking about the private one right so this is the something that for the third party and all 
so with the self hosted private cloud governance you know we'll be focus on the you know the same what we have the internal slas so we were talking about the you know uh, for the internal service level agreement uh, you know what we are defining on the private cloud if you are managing yourself internal sla or the cloud you know your for the your cloud user what you have and okay those kind of things charge back and bills how these things will be over there okay we'll be talking about those things then there is going to be the public cloud so customer they have kind of reduced ability so you know reduce ability uh to govern the you know their operation on the public cloud so they are providing basically you know that the cloud service provider will take on the outsource responsibility of governance here the customer will have reduced ability to actually negotiate contract because whatever the cloud service provider does it is going to affect the multiple tenant so we don't have the luxury to go ahead and you know negotiate the contract on the public cloud over here okay because it is going to be the one set of resources okay one set of processes and all these kind of things so you know with the different different user if you keep changing them it is going to be the very very difficult over there so this is comes sometimes you know kind of a trade off if you want to use the public cloud over there so there is always a fine line that you want to use the private cloud or public cloud over there uh but it doesn't mean you know i think i remember one line from the uh, ecs case that was there that it doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to negotiate your contract you know but recognize that this isn't always possible okay instead you know this will be possible where when you are choosing the you know a uh, different provider which is not that much popular kind of a cloud service provider the services when you are over there so those are something but there will be some other risk related to security right so this kind of thing is always going to be there with the public cloud then there is going to be your community cloud as well okay so in the community cloud what you have you have a mix of the behavior of the governance that is in a public cloud and the private cloud the overall tool of governance and contract will have some of the economy of scale of public cloud provider but it will also tunable because you know based of the how you might to run a hosted or a private cloud because in the community cloud multiple organization they are coming together and they are working on a kind of a same project so they can tune it out according to their need they can everyone can put their need and because you have to you know you are in the shared environment you might have to listen to others as well right so that is something that will be over there and you know uh, there is always going to be the hybrid cloud okay so in the hybrid cloud organization they should be aware about the governance strategy so considering the minimum set of control that should be available for both a public and a private cloud and remember hybrid actually dictate that you could be in finite resource of a private cloud and then due to over subscription you need to burst into the public cloud and you know this is something that why you are using this cloud so we know in the public we have to and the private we have to keep a boundary between so where we want more control we will be going with the your uh what i can say will be go will we will need more control on the data and all these kind of a thing you will be going with the your private cloud so where you require the flexibility ease of use scalability you will be going with the public cloud over there so public cloud we cannot negotiate the contract but in the private we can actually negotiate the contract over here 